morning. We're at our local leaf hole yard. Here trying to see if we can pull some parts for the truck. I'm looking for the armrest and maybe a headliner. Uh, both are kind of unrealistic. Usually the interiors in these cars are kind of jacked up. But you never know. Uh, the, the armrest is plastic, so it could survive out here as long as it isn't getting too sunbaked. Uh, the headliner is probably not not going to be a thing, but I figured I'd take a look. Uh, and we'll see what else we can find here of interest. These yards are interesting. They're kind of fun, really. Pay a couple bucks to get in here, walk the yard. This is a hot, it's already hot today. I'm already sweaty. I've been out here for like three minutes and I'm soaked. You can get a list, like you can look up an inventory at this particular yard. Not every yard has that, but you can look up inventory and see what they have and where it's at. At least what row it's in, they're all numbered. And uh, I'm looking for, you know, something that exists in Tahoe's and Yukon's and Silverado's and Sierra's of all a bunch of years and a bunch of different models. So looking all that up was just gonna take too long. I just figured I'd just have fun and walk the yard. So I'm gonna walk this, we'll take a look, see if we can find what we're looking for. And I'll give you kind of an idea how these, what you know, depending on what you're looking for, what you might want to keep an eye on, might want to stay away from. This is Labor Day. There's a lot of people here today. It's fairly busy. Uh, generally, people here, you know, pretty nice. They're all done doing the same thing. I was trying to get their car running or get some cheap parts to fix up the ride. So we're all doing the same stuff here. Anything else? You wanna make sure you protect yourself a little bit. So be careful. Keep your eyes peeled. There's a guy walking around here in full boots, jeans, and a sweatshirt with a hood up. Gotta wonder why that's why he's doing that and September, whatever the day is, second, with it's 85 degrees out here and a sun, hot sunny day. So, you know, I keep my eye on him. But uh, generally, I don't have anything to worry about. There's our guy. He's been back there a few times. He's walking with a purpose. Yeah, you know, stink eye. They do generally have some rules about what you can bring in and what you can't. You can't bring in anything, a battery pack, torches, grinders, sawzalls, anything that's going to make sparks or flame. They've drained the fluids out of these things, but you can never get all the fluids out. And the last thing they want is for this whole stuff to catch fire. So you can see here, they have all different, I mean, anything you can think of, things you haven't thought of, conditions you might not have thought of, a little barbecue here. Obviously, you're not going to want anything out of the engine compartment of this car. So this is the right era. Silverado. I don't know exactly what year it is, but it's got that same style front end as mine's got, so it's in that era. Question whether it's got the right. There were two uh, center consoles. One was a, just a flip up box with a center seat, and then one was a center console with a just a flip up and lid. This has the box style, the um, armrest that flips up with a third seat. So not the rigid center console, it's missing the lid anyway. Uh, headliner is actually not bad. Problem is, this is an extended cab, not a crew cab, so it's not a big enough headliner. So that's unfortunate, but it's pretty good shape. Usually these things are all rotted and wet because these doors, the two will take the latches, the doors don't close anymore. The humidity gets in here or rain. Oh, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it's uh, sagging down, but that could be re-glued, but it doesn't matter, this isn't for me. Now, if you are looking for drivetrain stuff, you might be tempted. This is a nice looking car. So it's probably got nice stuff. Look on the inside. It's got a little bit of dents on the outside, but nothing major. A little bit of bumper issues. Interior was pretty clean, but it's pretty picked over. Headliner looks good. This is a GMC Acadia. So Acadia, Outlook, Traverse, Buick uh, Enclave, I think it was. They all shared the same stuff for the most part. If you're looking for a drivetrain though, and you might be tempted to look at this one and pull something off of this one, this is where you would want to avoid. Because if it looks this nice and it's in a scrapyard, it's here because it stopped running. Everything else is nice. It's not here because of an accident. It's here because it probably either seized up, blew an engine, or uh, training went out. If you are looking for drivetrain stuff and you're looking at a junkyard, you don't want to look at a nice car, you want to look at a beat up car. 
But just as an example, you know, this car ran to the scene of the crash. Now I did get some cave-in on the front, and there's some potential damage on the engine. You know, those engines are mounted sideways in these. So you want to do an inspection, but you're better off, you're more likely to get something, I should say, that works here than one of those nicer vehicles. Okay, this is a little bit better example. So this is a Chevy Cruze, 141,000 miles on it. Got hit in the front end in the corner, caved that corner in, so obviously frame damage. Airbag's probably deployed, so they scrapped this car. But the engine is pretty clean. They picked over a little bit. So let me take the exhaust off. Um, intakes are off, so you know it's not a uh, manifold gasket. There. So somebody's picked this over a little bit, but if you find one that's not been all picked over, this could be a good candidate for something if you want a drivetrain swap. I don't know why you'd pull a, unless you have another Chevy Cruze, why you'd pull a drivetrain out of one and put it in another car. So interior is pretty clean in this, the engine's pretty clean. So you know, if you needed parts in this, obviously you're not taking fender or bumper, but some other stuff is pretty good on this if you needed it. For an inexpensive car, you know, you don't want to spend a ton of money fixing it up. You pull it can be a really great place to pick up some cheap used parts. There's a 98 Firebird there. It's nice rims though. Those be worth something. Definitely want to wear some old shoes, boots if you've got them. You get pretty messy out here. Had a lot of rain, and these yards are just dirt, so they'll get muddy. That's what I'm talking about. That was a treacherous walk in the mud. <laughs> I have I have waterproof boots, but I do not have slip-proof boots. There's like no tread left on the soles of my boots. I almost died there, or at least got really, really muddy and wet, and that would have sucked. This is the same yard I pulled that training out when I put in the uh, in the Trailblazer, and uh, so I was the same deal. I was looking for one that was wrecked. In fact, I was actually looking for a head-on collision because a side collision. Still might have just been parked. Head-on collision means it was moving. I didn't care about the engine. I just wanted the transmission. So the transmission probably worked. And it did. So that's one approach to take. This one here. It's interesting. Took the whole cab off this one. You can get a lot of body panels. If you're looking for fenders, hoods, hatches, if you have a hatchback, those are usually pretty good shape. Uh, unless they've been in a rear-end collision. The side stuff gets a little bit dinged up because people who don't take care of their cars tend to bounce their cars off of things. If you got something that's really, really damaged, um, you know, something you can just bolt, unbolt. Now, if you've got a quarter panel, you got a cutoff. Like I said, they're not gonna let you bring cutoff tools here. This looks like a rollover. It's damaged on the side, roof, the front. So whatever, it, it flipped maybe multiple times. So again, engine, mm, transmission though, probably pretty good. It takes a lot of force to flip a car. Okay, so that's got the right uh, type of top, but it's a little cracked up. Um, and it, this is an older generation. This is like a 02, 01, 02 model. But anyway, it's the wrong color, and it's the leather end is kind of cracked up. So I'm gonna skip that. They're not terribly expensive to re to repurchase, you know, aftermarket. So I don't wanna. I'm only gonna go super cheap on it if I can find one that I think will work. So I just wanna show you this little Scion. I forget what these are called, little boxy SUV things. Got some SCAR audio stickers on the side. Midnight Society, Kings, Florida Chapter. Like this is, you know, a club of some sort. Uh, that. Uh, this, this car's got a story to tell. And I bet it's a violent one. Two, three holes in the back. There's at least one matching hole in the front. That's got some bad juju. I think I wouldn't pull anything off that car. You need to get some obscure ones. This is, what, this is a little Triumph, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's an Alfa Romeo. Should have known that. A little Alfa Romeo Spider. Pretty rough. But again, you need a hood or something. It would work. It's a Jaguar, was this the XKR, I think. You know, it's pretty rough. Seat sitting up on the top, which is a little weird. Um, the top is actually pretty good shape. Interior's not too bad. So we're going to pull some of the interior out. This stuff can be really pricey. Aftermarket or eBay or whatever. 
So if you have an option like this, this can be a real, real value, real money saver. But again, just gonna look at the condition of this one. It's not bad. It's not been wrecked. It's been picked over. So some of the stuff like this bumper falling off and that kind of stuff, that's largely from people pulling stuff off it and just leaving it laying there. So I wouldn't trust the drivetrain in this one. And it's a Jaguar. I wouldn't trust the drivetrain in him anyway. But if you need some other pieces, this fender's in pretty good shape. The doors are pretty decent shape. They'll probably need to be painted, but you might be able to salvage the top if you wanted to. Just got done talking to a guy who uh, he's got a, thought he had a bad motor mount in his car. And it turns out it was just the bolts that were missing. No, no, no. No motor mount bolts. That would be bad. So I think the motor mount's fine. So we came in here, pulled two bolts out. Right? You don't have to buy a whole motor mount. Because you can't just buy the bolts. So I found the same car. Found the bolts for him. He's probably going to pay 2 or $3. dollars And he's going to get his car fixed. That's the kind of stuff you can do here. He didn't want to be on camera. He's a cool dude. Sat and talked about his, his car. It was his kid's car. And a 15-year-old daughter. And he bought her a manual car. Good for him teach her how to drive on a manual and uh, she got a learner's permit and so trying to get this car running for her and get her on the road and get her get her learning that's you know that's a good dad this yard also has a classic row they call it there's some old cars here you get an old taxi cab yeah fun little lawn ornament <laughs> doesn't think it's worth anything uh, you got a bunch of Corvettes here. Now, this is something that's true with these, you know, the cars like this, where you have a drivetrain that's an in-demand, they don't last long. They get picked up pretty quick, if not the yard pulling it themselves and selling those separately, like on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or whatever. Um, you know, those are, they can be a few thousand bucks for the, uh, what is this? This is a C6, so it'd be a six liter LS2. So that's been in demand for LS swaps. These fourth gen or C4, I guess, Corvettes with that Crossfire tune, what is it called? Tune port? Tune port injection, that's what it is. Um, yeah, those are not as in demand. <laughs> and you can see every single one of them. There's one, there's one, there's one. They also have the engines in them because nobody really wants them. Oh, this one got taken out. All right, I stand correct. One person wanted one. This one's still in there, that one's still in there. Top of the hill here, they got golf carts. There's a whole lot of motorcycles up there. They're also you pull it. If you're into that sort of thing, this can be helpful as well. Well, unfortunately, I struck out today. Well, not entirely. Did find a cross lug wrench that somebody left behind. So, that was worth the trip. I didn't find what I was looking for, but you know, nothing was, I, I had a feeling it wasn't gonna pan out. This is, uh, this kind of stuff at a junkyard is hard to find and hard to get in good shape, which is what I found. I found the stuff, just none of it was any good. So, you know, like soft parts like that are sometimes a little bit hard to come by at these pull it yards, these you pull it yards, cause they just get wet and humidity and animals and whatever else, so. But it was fun and it was free. So I figured I, they have hot dogs and drinks and stuff. So I figured I'd come check it out and see what we could find. So anyway, if you got cheap parts you need, even if you have an obscure vehicle, Jaguar, that little Alfa Romeo, like you never know. Check out your local u pull it yard. You probably get parts for, I think my experience is it's generally around 20% or so, 25% of what it would cost you even use on Marketplace or eBay or whatever. So if you got one by you and you're willing to put a little sweat in, you can get some cheap parts too. As always, hope it helps you. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll try again another day. Well, till then, we'll see you next time.